Welcome to Peace in the Valley, where adventure starts at home. It's hard to believe, but we've got over 50 hours now on our tractor, and we're going to maintain the machine ourselves. We got the parts from Rural King, and uh, at the same time, we're going to update some of the paint, get it better. Uh, come along, follow us. Uh, as the title pointed out, I want to make sure that you do not forget the screen like I initially did, and thank you to uh, Denny Rust, who helped us make sure that we got that on. I uh, got that corrected and if you can do it before you put in your fluid you're much better off. Hello everyone this is Bryce Steiner from Peace in the Valley and I invite you to come along be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Today we are going to uh, do our 50 hour service and you can see that there are other people who have uh, actually done better job than I will do so I'm going to link to their channels and that includes uh, my friends over at uh, Rusty Farms, Denny Rust and also Try New Things I uh, go to their channels to get the details they are truly experts I am just pretending so I want you to come along and join me uh, one of the things I'm going to use different than 1030 oil is I'm going to use uh, five, let me see if we can see this in the light, 5W40 uh, synthetic, and it's made specifically for diesel engines. That's one thing that I'm going to do different, but uh, I think the other will work fine since the engine says, or the manual says you can use it, but it also says you can use this. Since the engine's new, I want to make sure it lasts as long as possible. Uh, anyhow, we're going to get started, so come along. Before I get too far into this, I'm going to write today's date on the filter. So this is the transmission hydrostat filter, and we're going to put the date on. And I'm actually recording on 828. And I'm also going to do that on the engine filter. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, be, be able to read that for the next oil change, but I'm doing my duty now. Now, when you go to Rural King and you get your filter, first of all, I would call ahead and make sure they have this model and order it if they don't. Uh, I was told by Napa that they could get it in, I or they would have it. I'm not sure if I would trust that, but I was down there and asked them. But it is not a cheap filter. Also, you cannot go onto the Rural King website, tractor or otherwise, the regular. You can't order it there. You have to actually call in to make sure they have it. And I think you'll find out pretty quick if, they're, if they've got a good department going on or if they have any issues. We're going to start with the engine oil and then we're going to go to the gear, front gear oil. Okay, I don't notice any shavings or anything on either one of the plugs. However, it is dark. There's the dipstick and the oil filter is right there. So we'll see if we can get that off now. Thank you. 
I had to use a leather glove to get it to loosen up. Seemed like it was excessively tight, but I know we don't want them coming off. Almost three quart, quarts is what I have right down. 2.9 for the engine oil. So we have four quarts in here. And one, two, three. We're gonna go down to about right there on our mark. And check it before we even get there though. We're at two quarts right now, according to our side guide. halfway in the middle. Now I know that the filter is going to be swallowing up some too, so we'll keep going. Until we get to about 2.9, we're about, we're about there. We're a little less than half, so we're gonna we're gonna watch that and see where that puts us after we change the other fluids. Okay, next I'm actually going to lift the tractor up a little bit, and we're gonna change the front gear oil. And see where that puts us after we change the fluids. Okay, next I'm actually going to lift the tractor a little bit, and we're gonna change the front gear oil. Okay, now we got the tractor off the ground. Okay, so here's what we're looking for. 
the drain plug here, the vent here, same thing on the other side, except on the other side, there's also a fill plug right up here. So we're gonna start with this side, so we only have to do it be over here once. And we're gonna put the drain right there. That way I don't have to remove the tar. Either way is tight. I'm sure it's a standard thread. The first time paint, I think, causes the threads to be really tight. Factory paint, I mean. This is 8090 gear oil. Got it from Tractor Supply. What I'm watching for here is for oil, when it starts coming out of the vent tubes, then I'll plug it up. Okay, next we're doing the transmission. And one thing that we need to do is remove the seat uh, or, or pull it forward. 
Okay, uh, and then right there, nine sixteenths will work just fine. And we just use an extension. and loosen it out. Place them in the cup holder so you don't lose them. So if you didn't know the seat could, seat could slide forward, it most certainly can for different people. Okay. If you have anything on the seat, Take it off. Okay, now what's interesting is that you can actually now just lift the whole seat out. It is a little bit heavy. Like that. But now you have full access without having to do anything funky. It's too tight for me, even though, there we go. Okay, now we are ready to drain the transmission fluid. We are down here underneath the tractor and straight underneath the seat is the drain port on the ground, from the ground. A wrench to pull it off. Now keep in mind, you cannot mix your transmission waste and your oils. You can do your gears and your engine together for recycling, but not transmission fluid. Man, okay, I gotta find something else. I'm rounding it off. There is a strong magnet here, and you can see there's a little bit, there's, there is some stuff on it. So the magnet exactly did its job, and this is exactly why you have to do a 50 hour maintenance. Sometimes I wonder if it should be before then, especially seeing how dirty the engine oil was. Okay, get all the crud off the magnet.
Now I can't quite get that one, particularly because of this, this clamp right down here, right here. But Denny Rust was informing me that the filter is actually right inside here. If you watch his post, you'll see that. We're gonna aim to get that out for cleaning. Yep. Be sure to disconnect the brake okay. rod from the transmission. I should have done this to begin with. Just about ready to come. There are two bolts right here that I am removing. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see it, but they're not hard to find. The manual does not say anything about doing anything with this internal filter. In fact, I don't even think it mentions it anywhere. However, uh, when you do pull it out, make sure that you have already drained the fluid. Okay, we got it out. There it be. Okay. You can see here that I did it as an after fact. That's why my clothes are different. And if you miss it, I think if I had to do it over again, I would just not worry about it. It was not that uh, dirty. I did want to do it just to show that, uh, one, that I could so, do it, and filter. two, that uh, just for the knowledge of knowing Get how out. to do it. You do have to take the wheel off or you will not be able to pull it out. It's about 8 to 10 inches long and I, I don't think you could pull it out with the wheel on. It's just too cumbersome. The wheel itself is very heavy so make sure that you can move it around if you, uh, if you do take it off. I rolled it back just a little bit and kept it leaned up. The fluid inside the tire sloshes around. It's a little different than your normal vehicle tire. I ended up using brake cleaner to clean it off. Let it dry for about a half an hour before putting it all back together.
it is a fine mesh screen that we have here. And I'm just using brake cleaner on it. Trying to get metal shavings and filings out that I can see. Okay, we're gonna leave this sit while I go eat supper. And for a look inside the transmission, there we are. Can you see that? See that back in there? Okay, we got our two bolts. Make sure you always thread the first couple threads by hand before using the impact wrench. Once you know that they're not cross threaded, Okay, we're nearly done doing our 50 hour roundup, but we're getting ready to uh, add fluid now. As you can see down here, we have been draining just about done, and we did get the filter off right here. It's a fairly large filter, it's the same one that goes on the 37 model, but it goes right up here. It's very tight to get at. I don't know if that you can see it or not, but it's it's right there, uh, right underneath the tractor, and it is pretty, pretty difficult. So we're going to put the other one in, and then we're going to fill up the fluid. Since we did get rid of the seat, uh, it's going to be pretty easy to access right here. Okay, you can see it right there. That's why you also want to date them while they're off the tractor. Because it is nice and difficult. There's a couple things we're going to do before we fill up the transmission fluid. We lowered the jack down already for the back, and we're going to blow out some of the dirt that's under the seat. Okay, next we are going to clean out the pre filter for the air. Okay, and there is a nut to loosen this little gate. I don't think you have to loosen it, but one thing that I did, and that was I welded on a wing nut, or wing nut, onto the nut itself. So that way it was easier to do this. So right now, we slide this out of the way and we can pull this out. Now I try to blow this out every once in a while. I don't wait for the 50 hour service. And it's not too bad, it's got a little bit. and put everything back. Boy. Okay, now we're what? 
watching for that little thing in here. Ooh. A gross sound. Okay, I'm starting to see stuff. Hold off. Okay, you're just below that red dot. Okay. And we'll go just slightly above it. Okay. Okay. Right on the top edge of the red dot. Okay. Not time too badly, is it? There's a couple things I want to go over while we are uh, doing maintenance. And one is keep in mind uh, the oil levels. Right here in the back of the manual, right where I have earmarked, it says 5.8 gallons or uh, 14 liters for the transmission. That is not correct. I bought two gallon or two five gallon containers. There's one of them, or they're both right there. I only end up using one, part of one. So keep that in mind. You do not need as much as what it tells you. And you do not want to overfill it. Maybe the first time before uh, implements are connected, such as the backhoe, maybe that's how much it needs. But uh, once the lines are full for the front end loader and the backhoe, I would say at 3.7 is what I was told in the video, and I that is exactly right. Uh, another thing to keep in mind here is there's pictures. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, right here on page E15, it shows us that there are five grease points, two at the front knuckles, one in the center, and two on the sides. Uh, let's go over those because they are rather confusing. And if you're just starting out, uh, you don't want to be confused. So on the front here, you ha there are no grease points, even though it shows it in the manual. The manual was... Uh, printed, I guess, before the tractor was made or something. Neither side has them. However, there is one right here. You can see that right on the front. Keep that in mind. But this is this also confused me because it only shows one. There's also one on the exact opposite side. So there's actually two in the center. You see that? We had one on both sides. And I did not notice that before. Uh, it took me a while to catch that one. Here's the ones on the side. On the other side of the tractor, you can see it on mine because there's some grease, but it's actually on the difficult side to access. So you see that right there? That's the other one. Now, don't wait to grease the tractor. If you use it all day long, then grease it. Don't let a chance for water and grime to get in it and start causing problems. There is one last beginner tip I want to show you. And the reason I'm going to show you is because it's right here under the seat. You may not know what this lever is for. When you're not using your backhoe, you keep it in your center. Now, the lever doesn't seem to do a whole lot, but it does. So I'm going to start up the tractor. And show you what happens and the reason I can show you real easy is because I have the hydraulic top link attached right here so 
what happens is, is when I flip this switch, you see, now as soon as I came to the limit, which was this way, it put the tractor under load. So in the center is neutral. Now if I want to pull it back, okay, then I move it to the left and it's under load. Well, I want to tell you something that happened. Something that happened uh, earlier this week was I got my tractor back from uh, Rural King. They were going to do the 50-hour service, and then somebody got COVID and wasn't able to. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. I'll make time for it. So uh, one thing that I noticed when I got the tractor back was I had virtually no acceleration. When I was pushing the pedal, when I would push the forward pedal, it would move forward, but the engine just did not feel like it wanted to accelerate. And so I checked down here the, the wires, and they seemed relatively well. Nothing seemed too loose. And I did some testing, and, and I'm not sure, but I think those were fine. Then I noticed that this had gotten bumped and it was all the way in the in the the back position, the retracted position, and it was in that position, and it was putting such a load on the engine, I believe. So when you move it back to the center, the acceleration is just fine again. So keep that in mind. If you're having problems with acceleration, or you're having problems with uh, it, just feels like your engine's under load. Make sure that the uh, rear remote control is in the center. Now when you're on operating the backhoe, you're going to need it into uh, the other positions. Anyhow, uh, keep that in mind. That's a really easy thing to bump when you're getting in and out of the tractor. We finished our 50 hour service. There's a couple things I want to bring to your attention though. Uh, one, if I can remember now, because it's so darn hot, Oh, that's it. Don't do it on a day that's 95 degrees and 90% humidity. Just wait. If you have to wait, uh, or plan on a day that's going to be cooler before you hit your number of 50 hours. I think I, I would also do maybe, maybe a little before 50 hours. Uh, if you work your tractor hard, which I think, I think we do work it pretty hard with digging tile and so that is uh, a couple things. Now, for newbies like me, I, I've never owned a tractor. I've had, I've had uh, mowers. But something I want to point out here: before you get your tractor, there's a couple things you need to know. And one is, do not drive the tractor on the road in four-wheel drive. You might think, you may forget about it, but when you don't need four-wheel drive, take it off. Because one thing that happens is when you're driving on the road, if you hear a high-pitched squeal noise, you're grinding your tires down. Um, I'm not going to say that was from experience. Anyhow, uh, don't let your tires be in four-wheel drive. Also, make sure that you know when you're in high and low. When you're loading on a trailer, put it in low, put it in four-wheel drive. Make sure the rear of your trailer and front are supported. Okay. Do not take chances like I did. You can watch my previous videos. I could have easily damaged uh, the trailer or the van. And uh, make sure everything is well supported. You've got everything hitched up. You've got jacks under the back end. Anything that will keep your stuff from being damaged, do that. Keep in mind what Denny Russ said and make sure that your bolts are tight. I haven't had problems on my tractor with the bolts coming loose. Uh, but if you don't check it, it's probably already too late when you find it. You don't want things shifting around, especially when that backhoe is on. Make sure your bolts are tight. It's pretty easy. I showed you in the video uh, that we just did of uh, putting the impact wrench on it with a wrench on the back side to hold on to it. Those nuts are actually welded onto the frame. You don't have to hold on to it. And you can just go and check them real quick. Put your impact wrench on it and uh, just make sure they're tight. Also at the 50 hour service, something else to keep in mind, it's a good time to check your tire pressure. 
And after you're done your 50 hour service, make sure you check for leaks and check for all your levels. Okay, well thank you very much. Have a great day and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends too. Take care. You want to go outside? I don't think so. No? No? Um, if you're really nice, you think you I should let you out? Oh, you want out too?